So these are just a few of my personal diet tips that can help you shed a few LBs for the summer. If you'd like to know, keep on watching. One of my main tips is start tracking your macros. So find a macro counter. There's tons of apps out there. Um, MyFitnessPal is probably the most used one. That's the one that I use. Um, you can pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. Um, pretty much the only difference is when you pay for it, um, you do get to customize your macros like exactly the way that you want, which is super nice, but you don't have to do that if you know what you're gonna eat um, and you just don't care and you can do the math in your head every day, you don't need to buy it. Like you can set it as close as you can to your calories and it'll work out just fine. Personally counting macros for the first like week or so is really annoying. Um, it takes some time to get used to, just like anything. Um, but once you get used to it, it actually is a really awesome tool. It's taught me a lot about food portion sizes and what I should actually be eating to, for whatever my goals are, if you're trying to gain muscle or lose fat, you can change your macros around. And um, you know, it's important to learn that. And I feel like the only way to learn is just to practice. Um, and just make sure you're reading the back of the ingredient labels. And um, yeah. It's not that hard. I definitely recommend um, once you start getting in the habit of tracking your macros that you should plan your meals like the day before, um, usually before I go to bed or sometimes while I'm like chilling in bed, um, I will just go ahead and set all my macros. I mean, sorry, <laughs> I will go ahead and set all my meals for the next day. That way when I wake up, I don't even have to think about it. Um, it's there, I know what I'm supposed to eat, and you know, if I do choose to eat something different that day, so easily can just exchange it or fiddle with my macros a little bit, but so easy. Um, definitely recommend trying to track your macros every day. Learn how to make volume meals. Volume meals are the best thing like in the world, I'm not gonna lie. I personally love feeling like I'm getting this massive meal. It's gonna satisfy me and make me feel really full for a long time. I love that it's so nutrient dense um, and filling, but so low in calories. So I always just kind of fill my bowl with veggies. So veggies are my base for my volume meals. And then I will add some kind of carb, maybe some rice, maybe some sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are really good. And then I will add my lean protein on the top. So sometimes I just make like a big batch of shredded chicken in my crock pot. And I'll use that for the week and I'll just top it on my salads. Um, I'll eat it alone as like a little snack. Um, you know, I just make like a big batch of chicken. Um, I love tuna, so I probably eat like a, two cans of tuna a day. Um, so I put tuna on my salad. Um, I use, you know, you just, you get creative, but honestly, like the more simple that you keep your food, the better. Oh God, I think, it's like a cat poop or something. <clears throat> oh, I didn't get it. But it's better to just eat really simple, clean foods, vegetables, fruit, I try to stay away personally from a lot of dairy and processed um, grains. So anything sprouted, like sprouted grain bread, you know, my, my tummy seems to do pretty well with that, but when it's not sprouted, gluten just blows me up. So, and so does dairy, if I over, especially if I overdo cheese. And this girl loves cheese, <laughs> so. Yeah, I have to minimize my, my dairy intake, but you know, I have some Greek yogurt once in a while, I have a little bit of feta cheese in the morning with my eggs. Otherwise, I really don't have any dairy and a very minimal breads, like grains and stuff like that I try to stay away from. Um, so yeah, that's my advice with that. Another really good thing is to try to stay away from like prepackaged foods, bags of chips, um, even some of those granola bars, most of those things are full of sugar. Um, especially if you look in the back, you know, those, like, a lot of companies are so sneaky with their ingredients and uh, sugar is probably one of the biggest ones, to be honest. Literally, processed sugar is the devil. Like, 
If I could tell you to stay away from anything, it would have to be processed sugar. Try your best to really pay attention to your sugar intake every single day. Just always look at the grams of sugar on the back. Things will sneak up on you like your morning coffee, your evening coffee, your night coffee. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but no, yeah, drinks are probably the number one thing that we, we overlook, especially with sugar. Um, and there's so many awesome sugar alternatives. Uh, personally, I enjoy Stevia, and Stevia does have a learning curve to it. Um, it's 300 times sweeter than table sugar, so take that in consideration. It's super sweet. If you put too much, it's gonna taste nasty. It's gonna have this weird aftertaste. So, you know, you have to play around with it with your taste buds, but Stevia is amazing. It's an all natural sweetener. It's derived from the sunflower family. So it's just, it doesn't spike your insulin. It doesn't cause an insulin response. So it's gonna help a lot with weight loss. So definitely make the switch from table sugar to Stevia and you will thank me 100%. And Stevia is delicious, you can bake with it. I've made cookies with it and it's so good. Like you honestly don't taste that much of a difference. And once you get used to it, just like anything, it's like when you know you always have cream in your coffee and maybe you decided you wanted to stop having cream in your coffee. So, you know, black coffee tastes weird for a little while and then it ends up being delicious and you crave it. So that's how Stevia is and it just takes a little time. And the more you push away sugar, processed sugar, um, literally you need less and less and less sweets. I don't know why it works that way, but the more sugar you eat, the more sugar you crave, at least for me personally. So when I stay away from sugar, I don't want it, I don't care for it makes me feel sick when I eat it. So sugar is just not good. Try to skip sugar if you can, especially if you're trying to lose a little fat. Sugar, not the way to go. Fruit sugar, in my opinion, completely safe, completely fine. Obviously you don't want to overdo it if you're trying to lose fat, but who got fat off of fruit? Like, nobody. The daily limit of sugar for women every day is 25 grams and for men is 38 grams. The average person consumes 82 plus grams of sugar every single day. Every single day and we're supposed to have 25 maximum, well for women anyway. I literally put in my fitness pal, I can change the sugar grams. I try my best to keep it under 20 grams of sugar a day. Um, I don't add my sugar from my fruit. It's not really something that's gonna hinder my fitness goals, so that's up to your discretion, but fruit is delicious. Fruit is like nature's candy. Um, it's natural sugars. Obviously your body can process those sugars better than processed white sugar and cane sugar. And, you know, all that junk. At the end of the day, is just keep it really simple. Eat whole, natural, organic, fresh vegetables and fruits, lean meats, um, little dairy and little grains if possible, and no sugar. Those are my diet tips. I hope they help you guys out. Anyway, um, I'm gonna get off now and stop talking in my yard with all my neighbors staring at me. Looking like a total fool. Please subscribe and like this video. It really helps my channel grow. Leave a comment below about whatever you'd like to say and just any kind of feedback helps. I love it. Um, even if I can just motivate and inspire just one person, that is my goal. I really enjoy these YouTube videos. I'm still a newbie, so hang in there with these random ass vlogs. Mwah!